today. Is TikTok the next Twitter? The growing marketing platform being ignored by B2B? If morality won't stop Facebook's algorithms, maybe legislation will. And congratulations, your company's website is now on page one of Google. It's Thursday, October 14th, 2021. Happy World Standards Day. I'm Todd Maffin from Engage Q Digital, and here's what you missed today in digital marketing, episode 483. Quick, what platform would you go to if you wanted to reach people under 25? TikTok? Instagram? Here's what I bet you didn't say, Twitter. But today the company published new data on its younger users and said almost half of all tweets from May 2020 to May of this year were from users aged 16 to 24. Those are U.S. numbers. Quoting socialmediatoday.com, that runs somewhat counter to the perception that Twitter is being increasingly used by politically motivated groups to drive their messaging. But then again, Twitter is also known for its more left-leaning movements and focus, which would align with younger, more progressive viewpoints on many key issues. In some ways, that may also lessen the value that some put in Twitter's trends, as it's primarily younger users and not necessarily representative of the majority. This data shows that it's increasingly very young demographics that are engaging with tweets, which points to rising trends, but may also, again, not be representative of broader opinion, unquote. So from a digital marketing standpoint, Twitter says that some 70% of its Gen Z users come to the app to learn about new products. The same number like to share their opinions about brands and the products that they buy. The company also says young people on its platform want to interact with ad campaigns, especially when the campaigns are designed to garner interaction. Apparently, they were especially engaged when there was an element of the campaign they could riff off, something meme-worthy. Hmm. Ads, brands, memes, remix culture? Sure sounds like TikTok. In fact, Twitter's recommendations are almost point for point what TikTok recommends for brands. Provide a way for your audience to spin their own take on your message and connect them with a broader conversation. Again, from socialmediatoday.com. Based on these findings, Twitter advises that brands should take a participatory approach to their campaign creation, while they should also ensure that they stand by their words and drive ongoing action through advocacy pledges. That interactive community-based approach aligns with the habitual behaviors of Gen Z, who, again, increasingly expect to be able to take part and create their own content based on campaigns and trends, unquote. Today's premium newsletter has a link to the new research and links to 53 examples of great Twitter campaigns. You can borrow ideas from. Link to the premium newsletter is in this episode's notes. Andrew Foxwell's team has got a great new resource out for digital marketers. It's called the Q4 Quick Wins Guide to Advertisers. It's got ideas specific to this holiday buying season and covers changing consumer behavior buying patterns this year, the impact of tracking data loss, their recommendation on how your bid strategy needs to change in light of increased competition, a retargeting approach, some ideas around creative and user-generated content. It is a quick read packed with lots of good nuggets, and if you plan to be doing any selling over the next two and a half months, it really is a must-have resource. You can download it at b.link slash Q4 Guide. There's a link to that in today's episode notes. It's 10 bucks, and you'll be supporting this podcast too, as we'll get a small cut of that. Again, that URL is in the episode notes, or just go to b.link slash Q4 Guide. An interesting piece in marketingprofs.com today asks, if the connected TV industry, like Hulu, YouTube Premium, and others, is mature, where are the B2B advertisers? Yes, B2B. The author suggests business-to-business brands like Staples, IBM, and Microsoft could be joined by smaller B2B companies to get a foothold in the space, which is known as CTV. Quoting from the piece, The thousands of B2B marketers focused on performance and narrower audience targets, with millions in their media plan going to other channels, have yet to dip a toe into the highly engaging channel of CTV, and that is a missed opportunity. CTV has 231 million viewers in the U.S. alone. Those viewers are among the wealthier and more educated demographics, which means they comprise a hefty chunk of business buyers. That is plenty of volume for B2B advertisers to run locally targeted or audience-targeted advertising using TV or video creative. 
no one can make excuses anymore about a lack of scale on CTV, unquote. The whole piece is quite solid, goes into lead gen, multi-channel attribution, and the future of TV. It is up at marketingprofs.com. Look for the article called CTV Scale is Here, So Where Are the B2B Advertisers? We don't usually cover political or legislative developments here, but this one is an exception since it's about the social algorithms, probably one in particular. This morning, American politicians introduced proposed legislation called the Justice Against Malicious Algorithms Act, which would amend the country's legal shield that the social platforms currently enjoy in the U.S. to exclude personalized content recommendations that it contributes to physical or severe emotional injury. This comes after a former Facebook manager leaked internal Facebook documentation saying its algorithms reward anger and division. It may be a tough bill to enforce, though, as a lot of negative influence isn't necessarily illegal. It might be covered under the American ethos of free speech. Contributing to someone's anorexia? Horrible. Not illegal. Promoting vaccine information? Horrible. Not illegal. The bill would only cover personalized recommendations defined as sorting content with an algorithm that relies on information specific to an individual. And finally, I have some great news. After all that work you did on your website's SEO, I am pleased to let you know it worked. It worked. You are now on page one of the search engine results. Nice work. So that's the good news. The bad news is that everyone is now on page one because Google today has launched continuous scrolling on mobile devices. Now, when you reach the bottom of a search results page on your phone, the next set of results will automatically load. No more pages, just endless doom scrolling. Hooray. So a bit of a short episode today. The news was a little light for whatever reason, which actually turned out to be really, really good because I got up at 4.30 this morning with a really painful right eye. Now, yes, I sleep in my contacts sometimes and I shouldn't, so that's on me. But it was it hurt enough for me to actually get up for a couple of hours. Also, I had this dream after I got back to bed <laughs> that I had found five separate contact lenses in my right eye, the right eye that is currently painful. So anyway... Good thing, I guess, that today is a light day. All right, talk to you tomorrow. Meet Lucy Bella, owner of Fancy Flowers. Business was slow until Lucy received an email. Wedding date, February 14th. Flowers, only red roses. Valentine's Day, the most expensive day for red roses. So she used her American Express business card, which gives her the ability to pay over time with interest so she can buy those red roses now. Talk about love in bloom. Built for business by American Express. Don't do business without it. While this story is fictional, the value of Amex business cards is real. Terms apply. Learn more at AmericanExpress.com slash business cards.